Welcome back time now for your interactive segment. Israel will join me very soon, but you know how we do it on the interactive segment. It's on facebook.com slash joy news on TV. On Twitter is on joy news on TV. Let's have a beautiful conversation. No harsh words. And you know we can have a very beautiful conversation. Israel, where have you been? Well, yeah, it's just there. To learn to, to see the queen. Yeah, to see the queen. <laughs> then, yeah. All right, so President Kufuado has announced his plans to modernize agriculture and improve the sector in the next four years. The agricultural sector, which previously was a key component of the country's economy, has suffered a downturn recording less than 4% of the country's GDP in 2016. Question, what three things do you think can be done to modernize agriculture and also create jobs in that sector? Well, I think it should be more of education because in Ghana, most of us, our uh, mindset is made that uh, we think agriculture is for the uneducated, the mature people. I think that mindset should be changing. That is one. And two, capital intensive because most agriculture is something that needs more, a lot of money. Uh, people going to agriculture, there are a lot of people after school, those who read the Greek, they even say, I don't have the money, so I'm looking for some job to do. So how, should, how was such a person going to, he, the capital should be made available? Yeah, I think uh, you have to uh, put more money, uh, invest more money on the agriculture sector so that it can help a lot, so that you, the youth too can get jobs. You need uh, machines as well, like tractors and coal, to be able to do more. Now, if you are provided with that, to the, you need inputs such as uh, fertilizers um, for your crops as well. Then, to think of it, um, you know, some people are there, they are the youth. Um, some of them, it's not because uh, they are lazy, but it's because they don't have the uh, uh, basic requirements, like the resources. So if uh, he comes to the aid of those people by giving them uh, some capital to be able to produce more. I think uh, it, it will help. Also, also if, if this and we also patronize made in Ghana uh, goods, like um, eating, our, eating what we grow, and we don't depend on the foreign materials like the foreign rice and coal, I think that will help, that will improve. Um, what you can do is, uh, in Ghana we don't recognize uh, agriculture, but he has to finance um, agriculture and those who are into agriculture already, like you encourage them and help them to boost their uh, uh, like productivity in all those things that they produce. And I think the youth too, we don't have jobs. so. The most thing is, is to push the youth into the agriculture. That will uh, reduce like um, the, 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 the struggling we are all putting ourselves in going to the, 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 the government sector to, for gov uh, governmental jobs and whatever. So I think it can reduce some of the economic uh, difficulties that we are facing. All right, those were some comments from the streets. In fact, some suggestions to boost the agri sector. Let's see what you've been saying on Facebook. Israel. All right, so Moses Motor says, by creating jobs, more qualified agricultural extension officers should be recruited to teach our innocent farmers on innovations of farming to increase productivity. At least one district, 45 agricultural extension officers. It can be more, it can be more depending on the size of the district. Baha Musa says Nanado has mentioned all the ingredients needed for that. But for me, the most important and urgent points he made mention of are storage, transportation, and marketing of the goods, and also value addition. Senior Kwejo Safon says modernization of agriculture is a bedrock of development for any agrarian economy, of which Ghana is included. I propose a movement from small scale farming to much more corporate farming, like plantations. Also, a movement from our use of rudimentary tools to the use of much more advanced tools and equipment. Also, a perception change about why we should venture into agri would help too. Ilyasu Haruna says, one, there must be the av availability of fertilizer at affordable prices or free for free supply to farmers. Two, government must also devise measures to buy back farm produce like perishable products 
uh, preserve it for to preserve it for future use and three governments again must buy back farm inputs for exportation and import more fertilizer for supply when these measures are implemented the youth will be attracted to a Greek and the sector will grow and Richard Kweku from Paul Mansa says very much okay it's from very much from Jinijin that's his nickname I hear on Mampinin Kufo uh, Ekufuado is taking us back to the Operation Feed Yourself days, though we ain't facing any food supply challenges. The jobs promised the graduates by the MPP is farm, eat, and sell the rest. The same jobs they bastardized so much under the NDC. Ghana is indeed a funny nation. Nana, okay, KDM Bright says, already we produce, but the issue of limited farmers' choice discourages production. Answer is storage facilities. Number two, security must be assured. Answer, Galamsi operators must not invade the farm in the name of gold. Fulani must be given the right directions. And Al Hussein says, one most important thing in our Greek is the availability of water and ensuring that water is available. Boreholes and dams should be constructed. There should be an incentive for farmers. And Solomon Tete de Kaki says, when you multiply stages are used okay um upon techeku apia says improve irrigation to boost production avoid post harvest losses add value to our great products before exports cc collie says mechanization of farms that's number one number two modern form of irrigation and access to fertilizers to improve all year farming three easy access to finance for good pricing for harvested products. Five, insurance packages for farmers. Six, cooperation and regular education for farmers on how to prevent post-harvest loss. Seven, packaging of end products to prevent post-harvest losses. And eight, policies to support and encourage young farmers. That's a very tall list, and I think it's very detailed. Okay, so I have, I have my own proposal, and mm. uh, this is something I've shared with a, a couple of people. You know, there's some very wealthy people in this country Definitely. who can do large-scale farming. Definitely. The mechanized so. farming yeah. that we hear of in the U.S. and the rest. Exactly. So I say these people should go into farming as a way of, as they should see it as a social corporate responsibility, if yeah. nothing at all. If nothing at all. But at the end of the day, you're going to get produce which you can sell. Definitely. Instead of saying, maybe I'm going to donate this to this community or that community, send out food to those people to people yeah just make food available and to by people doing who so you would also hungry. be creating jobs for other people and then at the end the, yeah, at I the think, end of the day you I get think that's what I, I those think rich people should direct should their social responsibility and to. i think that it's satisfactory i mean at the end of the day you, yeah, you get so much fulfillment from and you, you, you you get fulfilled by and another so. way of going about this is to make agriculture say sexy <laughs> So that you, yeah, you, you should find young, influential, and successful people Being deciding to go into agriculture. In that area. Others will look at them, and they would also <laughs> want to go into agriculture as well. Yes, I think I think you you you, you you've made, I mean you've said it all. It should be sexy, but how? Imagine you being <laughs> in, in agriculture. I mean, going into farming. <laughs> I mean, what will I do to make it sexy? <laughs> yeah, you, you just being there. I mean, imagine. It's you a, just being on the I'll, farm. I'll think about we'll it. Maybe I'll about start with the backyard garden and then I'll improve upon it. Maybe I'll get some 10 uh, acres of land and start doing something. The backyard garden is a very good idea. It's a very good idea. Backyard garden. Yes. Aisha, backyard garden. <laughs> Israel. Also, the Black Stars, who are due to play their first match against the Cranes of Uganda tomorrow, say they will accept any amount proposed by the Sports Ministry as winning bonus at the ongoing African Cup of Nations. This follows a backlash they received from Ghanaians, especially after the appeal to the new government to reinstate their 10,000 winning bonus, which the then Sports Minister Neil Ante Van Der Poy slashed to 8,000. The question I ask, will this decision change the perception of Ghanaians that the black stars only play for money and not national pride? Oh, for me, my perception is still the same. Those guys have been playing for money. 
So because of probably the bashing they think they will receive from Ghanaians, that's why they've given this condition. So I still have that negative position about the Black Star. It's not the money. Because there's the, the players, they, they, they have their own money ready. So this one, they, they have own heart. They want to play on the nation. So it's not about the money. And even though it's a national something, even everybody who works for the ministries and all that is paid for what they do. So if I'm a black star player and I play football, I deserve to be paid. I think the problem it was based on the, the delay of their pay. So we should consider them and just consider it to be that it's their job. So they should be paid for what they do. Oh, for me, I still think they are playing for their money. Because uh, if, 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 if you look at what happened during the uh, World Cup in Brazil, uh, what happened is something which will not just clear off from our minds because uh, 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 they, 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 we were, they put us into a situation that we, we were forced to, what, to uh, let's say, ignore them. But for now, they are saying, I, today I heard on the news that any amount which will be given to them, they are going to accept it. I'm just hoping that that is really from the depth of their heart. So, uh, and going forward, um, I, they should prove us all wrong. But for me, I, I, I'm still having doubts. I think it's their, as I always say, it's their job. Nobody will go to work and expect not to be paid for it. The nurses go to work, and if they're not paid, they go on strike. The doctors go on strike. So if I'm a footballer, I risk my whole career, my legs and everything, and I'm not being paid for it, then one day they, they, they bring their money and everybody's complaining. Why did you say we are doing it for the country? And all we all take oaths for our careers. And now when you're about to do it, they don't pay you. People don't recognize you for it. It's very, very bad. All right. All right. It turns out some people confuse a winning bonus from appearance fee. Exactly. There's, uh, there's something they get paid for appearing in the tournament. Definitely. And then the winning bonus comes on. As Anytime a bonus, that's, what it's called, that's why it's called matches. a bonus. Yes, and yeah. so what, what do you think about this whole thing? Well, yeah, I'm, I'm happy that at least now they're, they're trying to, you know, make amends by saying that, all right, whatever you pay us as winning bonus, we're fine with that, yeah. which, is, which is good. And yeah. that's a way of reaching out. You know, it's a, it's a nice gesture to, especially because people are essentially disenchanted and following up with the black stats. And so... It's a way of the trying to get back to us. And yeah, coming like back, that. right. I, I like think that. uh, that's the point. Let's see what you've been saying. All right, on Facebook, on Facebook Francis Wolanyo says, most Ghanaians have lost interest in you. No amount of uh, favor from you can win their hearts. All you need <laughs> is to bring the cup home. Uh, there, they can consider accepting the prodigal sons. <laughs> Isaac Jr. says, this will never change my mind. I just don't know what will make me love Black Stars again. I pray they don't advance to the next stage of the competition. Oh, that's a bad that's too one. too harsh. Frank Barton says, OMG, that name sounds familiar. Black Stars, right? <laughs> I guess that's the team from Ghana. <laughs> Kindly let them know we forgot long ago they exist because we are busy fixing our lives since our jobs are harder and pays us far less in years than what they take in minutes. Next <laughs> article, please. And uh, Afra says, I, I have broken up with them in the GFA for good. I don't care whatever happened to them over there. If they win the tournament, they can send it wherever they want. And Victor uh, says, because money, money Ghanaians have, because of money, many Ghanaians have lost interest in the Black Stars. There is no patriotism. When you're playing for money, who should be following you with empty stomach and be cheering you on? <laughs> Go play and take your money. <laughs> And <laughs> Kwame Bisi says, until they stop thinking that playing for the country is a work to them, well, we'll forever concentrate on our works as well. Besides, they get paid better with their work for their country. Raymond Newton Kaku says, Sajiwa. What's that? Sajiwa. Saj <laughs> <laughs> I thought that they said that's their occupation, so they must be paid for it. All workers work without asking for support from other Ghanaians. So why should they be treated differently? They can even decide to pay money to the consolidated fund before they play. Nobody cares. I'm thinking about the queue at my watchy joint tomorrow. <laughs> and Barry Don Flex, he says, wow, I'm not surprised at all. If there, if there is a change of government, why wouldn't they change their minds? Indeed, change everywhere. Idris Barry from Winneba. Solomon Tete 
says they will come just after the group stage since some of some of them have already politicized the game or support them as such but don't make those wishes for the black stars no matter what it's still the black stars the gallant black stars all right so finally dkt international a giant family planning services provider has been involved in a fake abortion drug scandal the company has been found to be using unregistered drugs to terminate pregnancies at their facilities exposing women to severe medical complications including bleeding knowing how long the struggle has been for us as a country to ensure that women especially teenagers with unwanted pregnancy seek good medical attention in terminating those pregnancies i need you to share with me your thoughts on what you think is fueling all these illegal abortions among the youth <laughs> Most young youths like to go for the illegal one because the illegal one does not cost you bringing your parents into race and maybe your, your, your family members. But the legal ones, you have to, they have to ask for your parents uh, uh, first before they will maybe do it for you. Yeah, that's why I think like most of the youths will know, if, if me like this, if I, if I get pregnant and I want to go abroad, I will not go to a legal doctor because he will ask me, uh, my mom and those things. And it's something that you, you, that you, you don't want anybody to know. You don't want your mom to know. So that is why. Because even abortion is too is something that's illegal. So you don't need anybody to know if you're a young girl and you are hiding it. You don't need your parents to know. But if you're not hiding it and you tell your parents, that is when you go for the legal. That one, your parents will go with you to the doctor. Illegal abortion is very dangerous. That one, yes. But you can't say 100% um, is dangerous. Like, let's say 85, because, yes, most, most illegal ones are better. Oh, okay. To me, and for me personally, I think the reason why most girls go in for illegal abortion is because of money. And I think with illegal abortion, I think um, it's very costive. I don't know. I've never aborted before, so I can't say. But then, pers to me, from the way things, I think. Because it's a hospital with qualified doctors, it's um, costive than the fake ones along the roadside. Um, I think, um, no, mostly when people get pregnant, I don't think they really wanted it. Um, maybe it's a mistake or something. So they don't want anyone knowing about it. So they want to do it behind the scenes so that um, no one gets to know that, oh, this girl got pregnant. When you go to the hospital, um, they are going to ask about your parents, parents concern and all that so I think that is why people don't want to go to the hospital to do abortion and I also think it's because of the cost involved because illegal abortion they buy their own drugs somewhere some use these traditional herbs and it's very cheap it's cheaper as compared to them going to the hospital so that's what I think and some don't have the money so they choose the park daughters Interesting comments from the street. Okay. Hey, so but, uh, if I mean, you're a girl and you don't want your parents to know, you have to go and do corner corner things. Eh? No, but um, <laughs> I think a lot of the people are misinformed. They're, they're places where you can go to where they can take care of you. Oh, are, these pl uh, yeah, these exactly. places are legal. Mm -hmm. They'll give you all the advice, and then where necessary, they would help you. I, I think I think the other reason is that um, normally you can't just walk into a very organized hospital, a proper hospital, and say, "I'm pregnant. I want it aborted." <laughs> Definitely, the doctor will ask you a series of questions. I'm, I'm not actually. I'm, I'm not judge. actually sure that if you walk into a hospital, you can ask for an abortion like no, that. No, I, I don't think. But so. they are family planning centers. Yeah. They're all over, mm. one of them being the Planned Parenthood Association of Ghana. Right. You can go in there, they'll give you advice, and then based on your condition, they will Definitely. decide that uh, if they're going to give you, you the abortion if you need the abortion not. If you don't need it, trust me, they will not give it. So please don't go to any quack uh, doctor, don't go to any corner corner wayside anything. <laughs> yeah? All right, Aliu Mahama says there isn't enough education on the dangers associated with the drugs in these days, the adolescent girls like the thing too much. <laughs> <laughs> They're always chasing men around, and when they get pregnant, they try to get rid of it silently, ending up with such drugs. Rafik Adam says, if a man has a job and can take good care of a lady, he will not tell his loving fiancé to abort a pregnancy. But if you see a man encouraging a fiancé to do abortion, it's either the man has no job to take care of the family, or he don't love the lady. And Prince Nudin says, lack of education, poor parental care, 
or responsible parents, failure by the government to pursue those quirk doctors, criticism and uh, financial constraints often compel our ladies or women to do the barbaric act. And Richard Kweko from Pormanza says, um, the desire to have that sweet something tested brings about all those unsafe abortions. Even small chaps want to enjoy. Really? Yes, sir.